Kelly. Kellyanne, I want to start with a question that my colleague Martha McCallum asked you on Friday, whether or not all of the White House staff will now report to the new chief of staff, General Kelly. Here's your answer. That's just a pecking order question I think is beside the point, and here's why. We all serve the president and this country. Respectfully, Kellyanne, uh, I don't think it is beside the point. An awful lot of people in and out of this White House say the problem is there's a lack of discipline, there's an absence of a chain of command. So I'm going to ask you again, will all of the White House staff report to the new chief of staff? So I will do whatever the president and our new chief of staff, General Kelly, asked me to do. And yesterday I was on Fox and Friends and said very clearly that if we can have protocol pecking order, order discipline, and a chief of staff that empowers the staff to succeed. I know that General Kelly has done that on the battlefield. I know that he's done that as a chief military aide to former cabinet secretaries. I know he's done it as a cabinet secretary. And so we have great faith that that will be done. And that is nothing about our outgoing chief of staff, Ryan Priebus, who should hold his head high as he exits. M many great things happened in the first six months during his tenure. And I think that Reince will go down as one of the most successful and, ser and certainly longest serving RNC chairs where, as chair, they were able to raise a great deal of money and improve a digital and grassroots operation that allowed the Republican Party to succeed by getting the House, the Senate, the governorships, the state legislatures. So I'm always a protocol and pecking order kind of gal. I'm a very deferential person. I've never addressed the president, even when he was a candidate, and as, as close as we are as, as, as boss and employee, I've never addressed him by his first name. I always address people like General Kelly as sir, and I also, with Reince Priebus, was happy to do what I was asked to do as a member of his staff. But I think so much of the chief of staff role also occurs outside of the there's a little too much going on right now in terms of acting like he's the personnel chief inside the building only. This is somebody who regularly interfaces with the cabinet, and General Kelly is coming from the cabinet. He, he will be talking to his peers about their different concerns, their, the, their different deployment of issues. But and we've got a very active cabinet. I it often doesn't get covered. He'll also be interfacing with Capitol Hill, where a lot of the legislative agenda has stalled. I think the chaos this week really was on Capitol Hill and in the Senate. Well, Why, after seven and a half years, nobody jumped out of a cake and gave us health care reform in a silver platter? I don't know. We're going to get to health care in a moment. I do want to talk, though, about the disarray inside the White House. You had Anthony Scaramucci in a profanity-laced attack on uh, another, other members, not just one, of the administration of the White House staff. And so I just want to ask you directly, has Garamucci, who said that he reports directly to the president, has Garamucci, have you, have you now been told you report to John Kelly? I will speak with General Kelly and the president about that, as I'm sure Anthony Scaramucci will. We're very, I think we're all very curious and very excited to have our first formal meeting with our new chief of staff tomorrow. I've had a very brief conversation with him this weekend. And uh, again, getting, being able to solve the problems of this nation and doing it in an orderly and, and rapid fashion is really why we were sent to Washington. It's why the two people who were elected, Donald Trump and Mike Pence and no one else, are there. So to the extent that we can do more and do it more quickly in the disruptive fashion of which we're accustomed to with Donald J. Trump, I, I think that having the tools in place is very important. But I talked to Anthony this weekend. I talked to Reince this weekend. Everybody's on the same team in, in terms of we're on the side of freedom and democracy, repealing, replacing Obamacare, lowering taxes, putting ISIS in retreat, cracking down on these gangs, uh, sanctions on Russia. North Korea and Iran. I mean, you know, there's just so much that's happening. And, and I got to say, the swamp includes many people, many institutions, individuals, and, and I think um, calcified ideas that need disruption. And it includes, it includes folks also on Capitol Hill who well, I don't know what they were expecting, Chris. Were they not expecting Donald Trump to make good on his campaign promise and the moral imperative of getting the 20 million plus Americans who have no health care coverage, the relief they need, the six and a half million who are willing to fork over money, $3 billion worth to the IRS rather than get simple Obamacare? A coverage where they Ke did they not Kellyanne, expect Kellyanne, this president I gotta, I, to go gotta ahead allow and me do what he said he was going you to do. You got to allow me to ask some questions here. I want to ask you about one more question on the administration, then we'll move on to health care. This week, the president continued to attack his attorney general Jeff Sessions. 
Uh, and when he was asked whether or not he's going to keep Sessions in his job or fire him, here was his answer. I'm very disappointed with the attorney general, uh, but we will see what happens. Time will tell. Time will tell. Does the president want Sessions to continue as attorney general or, as has been suggested, is he considering him moving over to replace General Kelly as the secretary of Homeland Security? Again, that's a personnel question that only the president can answer. So just on Friday, you had Thursday and Friday, you had Attorney General Sessions in El Salvador and you had President Trump on Long Island, both working toward the same goal, which is to stop these vile groups, these MS-13 gangs, who are murdering innocent Americans and bringing drugs and violence into our communities. I, I so understand you saw that. the does president mean, Attorney General mean... working at the same time. Well, he's working. He's no, but a, he's I, I active, understand he's, he's working. The question is, is he considering him moving over if you're gonna if the immigration part of this is so important to be the Secretary of Homeland Security? I won't comment on that, but I will tell you that the president has frustration about the recusal. So much has, has flowed from that recusal. And so much of, the, of President Trump's agenda flows from the Department of Justice. Many of the primary issues in the program he won successfully on go through the Department of Justice. And look at what's happened with this ridiculous Russian collusion delusion. You see all these journalists who built entire TV sets and lower thirds and screaming graphics and breathless coverage now slinking away this week, Chris, from the Russian collusion coverage. Why? Because you have everybody from Jared Kushner giving his meeting with uh, the House and the Senate and giving his public statement. You have no there there whatsoever. It's completely back. We, we were promised the next Watergate. We don't even have water polo. We don't have a watermelon. It's so ridiculous. And the only thing I can see happening with Russia right now is this fusion, fusion GPS matter. Uh, the Senate witness who said everybody should go look over there at what's happened, somebody being paid by the Russians to compile a, a damaging dossier on Donald Trump, again, filled with falsities and lies. Do you know how much time has been wasted away from the victims of Obamacare, away okay, let's from not waste the working any more time. men, let's the working talk, women, let's and talk, on to Russia? Kellyanne, let's oh. talk about a, 